Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, visions of rat infested pizza, Atari's Chuck E. Cheese's. If you've never had the pleasure of dining in a Chuck E. Cheese's restaurant before, imagine for a moment an unending assault on every single one of your senses at once while a giant robotic rat mocks your existence with a dead lifeless stare and, well, then you've basically got it. Conceived by Atari co-founder Nolan Bushnell, much like Atari itself, Chuck E. Cheese's more or less bumbled its way to success. And in the process of gaining this success, it actually managed to change the landscape of American family dining. The story of Chuck E. Cheese's can be traced back to an epiphany Bushnell had while with Atari. Specifically, when he noticed that while Atari could generally expect to make between $1,500 and $2,000 for every coin-operated arcade machine they sold, the person buying them could reliably expect the machine to generate 10 times that amount during its lifetime. In Bushnell's own words, it didn't take rocket science to say, I'm on the wrong side of the equation. After a little research, Bushnell concluded that maximizing profits from arcade games and the like was all about securing a location and having a captive audience, two things he reasoned could easily be achieved with a restaurant. Bushnell's idea was then to create a restaurant where food was, as he described, an ancillary service, and the real draw was the games and entertainment. Essentially, he wanted to create something like a Las Vegas casino. There's food, games, and other entertainment entertainment, but he wanted to do it for the whole family. To this end, Bushnell decided that his restaurant should sell pizza, reasoning that it would be impossible to screw up such a simple foodstuff as long as the ingredients were good. This was important as he noted that he really had no idea how to run a restaurant business, so keeping it really simple was paramount. The secondary reason Bushnell decided to sell pizza instead of, say, fast food burgers and fries is that pizza has a built-in wait time once ordered. This meant that people would be playing the arcade games while they waited for their pizza. Knowing that parents would naturally want to avoid a restaurant where the contents of their wallet would be siphoned away by Pac-Man and his digital friends, Bushnell also decided that it would be a good idea to have other forms of entertainment at his restaurants, stating in his own words, the reason for doing the animals, believe it or not, was not for the kids. It was meant to be a head fake for the parents. Kids aren't really smart at knowing how to play their parents, and the kids knew that if they said, I want to go to Chuck E. Cheese and play the games, the parents would just see themselves spending money. But if they said, I want to go see Chuck E. Cheese Entertainment and it's free, they'd be good to go. The other thing was that we wanted the parents to have something to amuse themselves while the kids were in the game room. If you listen to the dialogue, it was fun, edgy stuff, kind of like Toy Story, written as much for the parents as the kids. Bushnell eventually settled on having this entertainment meted out by animatronic animals after a trip to the Tiki Room in Disneyland, reasoning that making a robo-animal rap or tell a joke would be child's play for his engineers. According to Bushnell, the working name for his pet project was originally Coyote Pizza. As such, he bought a coyote costume he saw at a trade show, which he sent to his engineers with a note instructing them to shove a robot inside it and make it talk. Unfortunately for Bushnell, what he thought was a coyote costume turned out to actually be a rat, which his engineers dutifully pointed out to him when he asked, how's the coyote coming? At that stage of the game, Bushnell decided it would be easier to rename the restaurant than, you know, send the costume back and get a different one. So he simply told his marketing team that now he wanted the restaurant to be called Rick Rat's Pizza. The marketing team, according to Bushnell, had a shit fit. You can't call a restaurant a rat place. People think rats are dirty. It's not going to work. Bushnell's response was simply to tell them to pick another name if it was such a big deal, adding, I don't give a shit what it is, but it has to be happy. The name they eventually settled on was Chuck E. Cheese's, apparently because you have to smile a couple of times while saying it. Chuck E. Cheese's? Maybe. Amazingly, the scheme worked, and the chain exploded in popularity. Even after a pretty catastrophic fall in much more modern times when the games and entertainment there became more than a little antiquated, the company still managed to sell for just shy of a billion dollars in 2014. The new ownership are taking steps to modernize the whole affair, and there are still well over 600 locations in operation around the world today. So I really hope you enjoyed that video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, I've got a podcast. It's called Brain Food and it's content just like this, just in the podcast format. But we go into more depth and really get into all of the details on any particular subject. You can check it out through the links in the description below or just search your favorite podcast app for Brain Food. And if you like this YouTube channel, you are sure to love that podcast. But if you want to watch something else right now check out a related video from the past over there on the right and as always 
Thank you for watching.